All right, hello physics. Um, I am going to make a solution video um, for solving for individual components. Uh, this will actually be the last kind of written solution video. So for circuits. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, before I actually start, I want to review the notes that I made just to make sure make things really clear that it will help us get set up. So let's look at these. So uh, there's, there's things I highlighted that are really important. When we're solving for individual components, we have series versus parallel. There are different facts we want to remember. So for series, all resistors share the same current. Okay, it's hugely important um, that if they're in series, their current is equal. Perfect. And then um, for voltage, they add up to the total voltage. So if they're in series, the voltages are not the same, but we can find those using Ohm's law. And for parallel, the current splits, okay? So it isn't all the same. So for parallel, they do not share the same current, but it adds up. Um, whereas the voltage for things in parallel is equal, okay? So voltage across the resistance in parallel are equal, but current splits, it adds up, okay? Knowing that, let's look at this first circuit that is in series. We have two resistors that are in series. Um, so the first thing we want to find is total resistance and uh, total resistance and total current. So because they're in series, resistors in series, remember we add the resistances up. So this would equal. just R1 plus R2, so that would be 350 ohms plus 120 ohms, 470 ohms is what that would give me, okay? So, easy enough. Point I total by Ohm's law, which is right here, oh, oops. All right, so we take V divided by R, V total, R total, so that would be 15 volts, voltage of the battery, divided by 470, I just found. That will give me, um, 0 0.032 amps, perfect. All right, so that is the total current. And, and if you remember, they said in the first video, the total current is the same thing as that's the current coming out of the battery, okay? So if the battery is in series with two resistors that are in series, they all share this current of 0 0.032, which is perfect because if I wanna know, so this is, this is R1 right here, and this is R2, their current, their voltage. So these are just the same as the total voltage because they're all in series. Okay. Sorry, I meant same current. Okay, so now that we have the current, it's really easy to get the voltage because of Ohm's law. Um, so voltage equals current has resistance, guys, right up here. So if I take that uh, current that I just had, so the current, and then I multiply it by R1, so in this case 350, then that gives me the voltage across resistor 1, so that would give me 11, about 11.2 11 volts. And then the same thing over here, the current I2 times R2, so 120. And that gives me 3.8. Okay, so um, I'll just write that. So this is I1 times R1. And this is I2 times R2. And there we go. So I have all the currents, voltages. All right, so I want to point out that I sh pointed out in the video is that if they're in series, the voltages are not equal, but they should add up to the total voltage. So my total voltage is 15. So if I take, so V1 
plus V2 should equal V total. So let's do that. So 11.2 plus 3.8 equals 15, which is V total. So that checks out. There's probably going to be a lot of cases where you will try to do this addition, and then you'll find that it's a little bit off, probably because of just rounding with your calculator. So it should at least be within like one volt at least, probably closer. All right, perfect. So let's do oh, number two, and it should be pretty much the same because we just have a um, series circuit. Now we have three resistors. So total resistance is just R1 plus R2 plus R3, which is 250, 330, and 1,200. So this gives me 1,780 ohms total resistance. And then the total current is total voltage over total resistance. So 30 divided by 1780, which is 0 0.017 amps. All right, cool, easy enough. They are all in series once again. If they're all in series, they share what? They share the current. So all these currents, I1, I2, and I3 are all equal to I total, which we just found to be 0 0.17, sorry, amps, oh, 0 0.017, sorry. My bad. All right. And now V1 equals I1 times R1. This is I2 times R2, I3 times R3. Okay. So that is I1. R1 is 250. That gives me um, 4.25 about. Okay, this is 0 0.17 times 330. Should be a little more than 4.25. Um, 5.61-ish. And then this one's a lot bigger, so this should fill in the rest of that 30. So it should be about like uh, 20. Yeah, 20.4 volts. All right. So once again, I'm going to add these up. So I'm going to say V. I'm going to take all the voltages I just got, add them up, see if it comes close to 30. I know this one's going to be a little more off because I rounded more. But 4.25 plus 5.61 plus 20.4. That gives me, yeah, it's going to be like 30.25, I think. Yeah, 30.26, so probably a little more rounding than I should have done, but it's close to 30. So I'm not going to do this every time. I'm just going to show you that. That's true. All right, so we're on a parallel. So we did two in series, now we'll do two in parallel. So we have two resistors in parallel, simple as well, but obviously we're adding these differently because they're in parallel. So I need to add the inverses and then take the inverse of that, right? So negative one. So one over 600 is R1 plus one over 750. So negative one, that gives me 333.3 repeating ohms, okay? Uh, total current, same as always. So then that is 9 volts divided by 333.3. .3. So that should be about, yeah, 0 0.027 amps. All right. So now we're different situation, right? We're, we're parallel. So now the current is not equal because, right, when the current comes out of the battery, 
and it reaches this junction, it's going to split between the two resistors, okay, depending on their resistances. It's going to be less through R2, more through R1, because it takes the path of least resistance. So if it's a smaller resistor, it's going to send more current. Um, so the current in R, so I1 should be bigger than I2, based on what I just said. And so we'll see if that's true. But the current's not the same, it splits, but the voltage is the same. Both ends of the resistors are attached to both ends of the battery. So therefore they share the current or the voltage of the battery. So V1 is also 9 volts. V2 is also 9 volts. Okay. So V1 equals V2 equals V total. Now current is just V1 over R1. Just like we find current here, we find it the same way. It's just now individual. So that would equal 9 divided by 600, which should be 0 0.015 amps. This guy is 9 divided by 750. So this should be what, 0 0.012? Yep. Just did a quick math in my head with the subtracting. Because just like the voltages in, in a series, the voltages add up to be the total. Here, the current should have to be the total. So I1 plus I2 should equal I total. So at 0 0.015 plus 0 0.012 equals 0 0.027, which is total. Perfect. OK? And we talked about this actually way back in class. Um, and it, and we were talking about how when we first discovered current splits with parallel, right, if the currents split and then they come back to this junction, they're going to, right at that junction, they're going to recombine before they go back to the battery. Okay, let me erase all these crazy lines I have. So the current hits this first junction and it splits because it goes down two different paths. So it comes out. It's this junction, it splits between the two paths, goes through both resistors, and then it comes to this disjunction, and it recombines here, and it returns to the battery. So when I add them back together like this, they should come back to the total, which is in series with the battery, okay? So that checks out, and that's awesome. All right, cool, cool, cool. Number four is the same process. You just have four resistors now, so it's a little more, a little more math. So add all the inverses. One over three thirty is R one. One over R two is five hundred. One over R three is one thousand five hundred. One over R four, which is two thousand. Take the inverse. All right, put that all craziness into a calculator. And I get one hundred and sixty one. 0.37, which isn't very much, right? Remember when we add in parallel, we reduce the resistance. All right, so this would be 20 volts divided by 161.37 ohms, which gives me 0 0.124 amps. I think I'm rounding a little, I'm rounding a little less here just so I don't have as much error in the end. Um, so if we got 1.2, or sorry, 0.12, that's good. All right. Parallel, what's our equality? They all have the same voltage. So all these, V1 is 20, V2 is 20, 3 is 20. Oops, that's not 20. <laughs> Just decided to up it. Nope. V4 is 20. Okay. I1 is V1 divided by R1, so 20 divided by 330, so that equals uh, 0 0.057. This is 20 divided by 500, which will come out to a nice number, 0 0.04 amps. 20 divided by 1,500 is smaller. So 
0 0.013 amps and then 20 divided by 2000 should just be 0 0.01 check that yep all right so um i'm not gonna add those up if you add them up they should come out to be about 1.124 okay you can check that i encourage you to but something i just remembered is we didn't check earlier is we said that we'll check it for this one too but we said that I1 and this one should be less than greater than I2 because it's a smaller resistance. And if we check that, I2, 0 0.015, 0 0.012, I1 is bigger than I2. And we should see the same thing here, that R1 should have the most resistance, basically because as you go R1 to R4, it increases in resistance. The current should get less and less. If you look at it from from I1 to I2 to I3 and I4, it just keeps getting less and less because current sends it sends more current down the path of less resistance and less current down the path of high resistance. And that checks out. The math shows that. So great. All right, number five, hardest one for sure. It's a mixed circuit. I didn't show an example of this in the video, so um, it's going to be new and i encourage you guys to try it and i'm sure that it's a little trickier hopefully some of you figured it out but um let's find our total we can find our total i total we've done that this one's really not bad we've done one just like this so r1 and so r12 we'll find first because that is those two guys r1 and r2 are in series so we can just add those up and be nice and easy so this would be 400 plus 250, which is 650 ohms. Okay, when I add those up, I'm going to end up with a circuit that looks like this. Where this is 1, 2, and this is 3. So that's just a nice little parallel circuit. So then the total is going to be the parallel combination of R1, 2, and R3. Oops. So R3, negative 1. Um, so that's 1 over 650 is R12 plus 1 over 1,000 to the negative 1. So that should be 393.94. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, this would be 12 divided by that. So that gives me 0 0.0305. Once again, I'm rounding a little less here, but 0 0.031, 0 0.03. I mean, close enough. Um, so that's not too bad. We've done that before, but now it's going to be a little more interesting the process is definitely a more complex to figuring out because nothing's in series with the battery and nothing's in parallel with the battery, right? Uh, well, sorry, that's not true. But like, for example, R1, nothing's in series with the battery. So we can't assume any current is the same as I total. Um, and then R1's not in parallel with the battery. R2's not in parallel with the battery because they're in series together. But nice enough, R3 is in parallel with the battery, right? It has both ends connected. So R3 by itself is in parallel with the battery. So that means we can say that V3 is 12. Because things in, in parallel share the same voltage. So the battery's voltage is 12, R3, the voltage across R3 is 12, okay? So that's nice. We can now find the current that passes through uh, I3 by just taking 12 divided by 1,000. So 0. 0, 1, 2 is what I get. Um, so that's where I want to start because I want to figure out what what is when I say things in series share the same current, things in voltage share the same. Sorry, things in parallel share the same voltage. I need to use that information to find a starting point. This is my first and only starting point. Um, but now, what do I do? How do I find the voltage or current across R one? Um, because they're not in series with the battery, they're not in parallel with the battery, 
they're not in series or parallel with R3 either. Together, they're in parallel. So together, I mean, the voltage across R1 and R2 is 12. But that doesn't really help me because that's like how they split. Well, what do we know about parallel? So we know that them together are in parallel with R3. So like, right, this is in parallel with this. So we know that the current splits, um, right, the current that comes out of the battery at this junction splits between here and here. So the current that came out of there is 0 0.0305. We know that. We found that. That's the current coming to the battery. And then 0 0.012 of that goes down this branch. So what does that mean? That means the rest of it has to go down this branch. And nice enough, the rest of that is shared between both of them because they're in series. So I1, so I mean the current that goes down that branch, so we'll say, we'll say I12, we'll just, because that's the branch 1, 2, is equal to the total current minus I3 because the Total current is split between those two. So if 0 0.012 goes down that branch, the rest of it goes down the 1, 2 branch. So 0 0.0305 minus 0 0.012 would equal 0 0.0185 amps. Okay, so that's going. that's what's going down this branch which is shared, which is nice. So they're both 0 0.0185. Okay. And then that's all we need. I mean, now we can solve for voltage because it's just I1 times R1 and I2 times R2. Now that we have that current, we just multiply by resistance. So this guy comes out to be, let's see. 7.4 and this comes out to be 4.6 7.4 plus 4.6 is 12 which 12 should be that branch because that whole branch is in parallel with the batteries so it should be 12 so perfect um so really um obviously this is a little more involved but really not that crazy um, you just got to figure out the puzzle pieces. Okay, once you find one clue, it helps you to solve and then leads you to the next clue. So the first clue we found was that R3 was in parallel with the battery, so we knew its voltage. So then we found its current. That current was the next clue that helped us solve for the current of I1 and 2, which is all we needed for voltage, and we're done. All right, so... Um, yeah, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you guys check this out and can work through it. Feel free to make your corrections, submit those for points, and um, talk to you guys soon.